Our next presenter, our next presenter hails from Mexico City. He attended the Col Culinary Institute of America and trained in Chicago before returning to his hometown to begin revolutionizing Mexican cuisine. His restaurant, Pujol, is widely considered one of Mexico's premier dining destinations, and Enrique Olvera is part of a new guard of Mexican chefs who are elevating the country's cuisine through interpretations at the highest levels of dining. Innovation is certainly on his mind, but his ultimate goal is the intelligent crafting and reimagining of tradition. We'll let him tell you more. Ladies and gentlemen, Enrique Olvera. Hello? Hello? Can we, can we please have everyone uh, just take a seat or get off the stage out of respect for our presenter? Everyone could just please take a seat. The workshops have been delayed an hour. Thank you. Like half, half an hour, right? Chef, I'm sorry if we didn't cue you uh, appropriately. Ladies and gentlemen, Enrique Olvera. Thank you. Um, we're going to start today uh, with a small video about Mexico City. Uh, Mexican cuisine is probably the most widespread and misunderstood cuisine uh, in the world because every large city has a Mexican restaurant, but usually they're not representative of the cuisine of Mexico. So we're going to start the video. Uh, it's about the street and the street food of Mexico, so please enjoy.
Uh, so as you can see, uh, that, that video was shot in a mercado called San Juan, which is in the center of Mexico City and is perhaps the most well known for the variety of the products. Um, so we're, we're going to do the, also a video with the uh, nopales on the back. The nopal is uh, perhaps the most uh, representative ingredient of Mexico. It's even in our flag. Um, it's a cactus. Uh, and then uh, it's usually uh, served as a salad or as, a, or as an accompaniment to the dishes. So what we do is we cure it in the salt. We mix it thoroughly. It starts releasing a, a little uh, saliva or sliminess. And then it, by doing this, what we uh, achieve is that the nopal gets cooked with the salt, but it doesn't change the color. We usually cook them in salted water, so the nopal gets like an army green. This, what, I, what it actually does is it keeps the, the color nice, it keeps the consistency very crisp, um, and it cooks the, the nopal in the salt. We're going to do this, and then what I'll do is put them in. You, you need to do that for three minutes until the color uh, gets a little bit uh, darker green or brighter green. And then you, we rinse them with cold water. Uh, you would do this over the faucet. And the idea is that the nopal should become, when it's raw, it's very uh, crispy. And then when you, when you cook it in the salt, it becomes a little bit, uh, has like a, little, uh, a bit more flexible. So what we'll do is, heating. And this is very, like I said, it's very traditional. I wanted to do something that is uh, very Mexican because as I've said, uh, Mexican cuisine is usually not well known. And, um, I wanted to do that, something that is very representative. And it's usually served with, uh, with uh, onions, uh, red, red or purple. We, we're going to do purple today. And then it also gets tomatoes, which, as, as you all know, it's one of the ingredients that is also from Mexico. And I think that the, the most important thing about Mexico is that we have so many ingredients uh, and so many, the richness of the ingredients and the techniques is so big that it, it's making, a, and it's not well known around the world, so it's gonna start coming out because I think that's one of the, the things that we're not doing as Mexicans yet, but here I am. Okay, so we just do that. And then what we do is put some of the red onions on top. And this we serve, as I said, as a salad at the restaurant, but in the streets it's served also in tacos uh, or served within a dish. I have also here a Mexican oregano. Uh, these are the leaves. You can use those or you can use also the flowers from the oregano. So the idea is to put the a very traditional dish into a fine dining context by just applying common sense and uh, the principles of uh, aesthetics to this dish. Um, I want to finish with some of, uh, this cheese is called canasto. It's a fresh cheese from Mexico. And then we're gonna finish with this. It's being grated in a microplane. So it has like a very fluffy consistency. Then we're gonna finish with the vinaigrette. This is just a simple vinaigrette. It's uh, lime juice and olive oil. And this is the nopal salad. I'm gonna put it over here.
So uh, next, we're going to show a video of how to do tamales. Uh, tamales are usually wrapped in either corn leaf or uh, banana leaf. This kind of tamal is more from the south of Mexico. So it's uh, wrapped in the banana leaf. It's a tamal made out of black beans, and it has a little bit of lard. So we're going to show you a video with a process of how to make the tamal, and then I'm going to plate it here.
So here I have some of the tamales that are finished. The banana leaf becomes brown when it cooks. And then if you were at home or in a, in a traditional Mexican restaurant, they would serve them like this, just the, the wrapped tamal. What we do is we place them in a rectangular dish. And then we did a gelatin with sour cream. It's just sour cream and gelatin sheets. Of course, the tamal will be served uh, warm or hot. Right now, it's, a it's cold because we're doing the demo, but you would serve it right from the steamer, or as I said, you can keep them in the re in refrigeration and then serve it like that. And this is also a very uh, traditional uh, garniture for the tamal. Is, uh, Cheese, grated cheese, cream. Alex, me pasas la salsa verde, por favor. And then we're gonna heat up uh, the green sauce. That sauce is made with green tomatillos or tomates. And then it also gets uh, onion, garlic, and Onion, garlic, uh, serrano peppers, and a little, bit of, a little bit of cilantro. Then these are cilantro sprouts. It's a very simple but very uh, comforting food. The sauce gets a little bit warmed up, and then we puree it and we strain it. And I always like to serve the sauce on the side because you don't know if the amount of pepper that people might eat. So we put it on the side and that way they can dunk them for themselves. That is the tamal. Um, I rushed through the presentation because we were running a little bit late in Mexican fashion, but uh, hopefully you enjoy. And then we also have a video for the ending so that you, you see so, some more of Mexican food. Thank you very much. So, okay, continuamos. El día siguiente tema con todos los amigos de los cantantes. Thank you. 
Y en esa habitación sí se fue el tema en la sirenita para todos los amigos. Does anyone, do we have any questions for Enrique Overa, please? Uh, we will send the mic up to you and uh, and let you have at it. Any questions? We're all quite sure about what we're what we've seen. Excellent, Chef. Thank you very very much. Cheers. Thank you.